what is this interaction with the mass through the medium? How is this, how is this mass, how is this energy interacting with the medium? So as overall, these equations propose that negative masses in Planck scale ether hide the secrets of the universe by unifying quantum mechanics, relativity, and particle physics through finitistic, discrete, non-infinite dynamics, avoiding singularities and infinities. So what he's saying is that this math, the Planck ether, makes it so that we don't get infinities. We don't get back in time travel. That somehow the ether, the zero point energy is what's correcting all of this. And if you were to try to go back in time, the ether, the zero point energy is going to swirl up and prevent it from happening. Prevent it from happening. That's pretty incredible. And this also now brings up the question of, are black holes real? Because you're just telling me right now that there's no infinities. Well, one of those infinities is a black hole. So what does that mean for a black hole? Does that mean a black hole is just some sort of stabilized object? What this shows is that vortexes have an invisible connection through an extra dimension. An invisible connection through an extra dimension. And we can see this by using an analog, the pool. We create a vortex in the pool and the vortexes do not collapse. They do not collapse. They are stable. And they're stable because there's a wormhole that's connecting them. And this wormhole is just using normal physics. And that's what prevents them from collapsing. They're connected. And that. And if you don't believe me, watch this. Coloring into the ends. The food coloring travels from one end to the other. And you can see the entire half ring. So cool. We just made a bubble ring without the bubble. This also tells you. So that right there is directly connected to, in my opinion, entanglement, teleportation, and this idea of managing Schrodinger's equation, solving Schrodinger's equation through the ether. What are we doing when we're solving Schrodinger's equation through the ether? We're figuring out where the other vortex is. We have one vortex over here. Okay, where's the counterpart? Oh, there's a counterpart over here. If we can figure that out, we can teleport. One more Grok thing I want to show. Okay, so this is when I asked it then, explain the Planck ether bus, how we can solve Schrodinger's equation to figure out teleportation via macroscopic tunneling. Macroscopic quantum tunneling refers to a large object probabilistically penetrating a potential energy barrier that classically forget, forbids passage. Described by the exponential decay of the wave function in the barrier region. We incorporate ether dynamics. The time-dependent Schrodinger equation is this, but modified by ether terms. It becomes fluid equations. When we convert it to a fluid equation, the quantum potential comes from the ether fluctuations. Negative masses introduce terms that flip the signs, which stabilize the wormhole throw. So right here, when people ask, how do we get the negative energy we need for a wormhole? Boom. The ether provides. The ether provides and allows us to get the negative energy that we need for a wormhole. Here's some more math. Uh, accessing negative energy allows engineering wormholes, making teleportation viable for interstellar travel. This solves the decoherence issue as the superfluid ether maintains coherence macroscopically, akin to a superfluid helium tunneling. Supposedly, story goes. Mark Lusk, professor at the physics department of Colorado School of Mines, worked with da -da -da -da, Frank Mead. Frank Mead? Frank Mead of the dense plasma focus? That Frank Mead? Okay. Well, let's take a look at what is he discussing. Um... What is this right here? Oh, look at this. Example. <clears throat> An introduction to optical vortices and topological fluids of light. Okay. This was one of the most crazy presentations I've ever run into. Well, now, started it. the part that I want to show here is that look at what he's saying right here. Look what this says. 
It says each 2D slice can be viewed as a projection of a tilted 3D object. Projection axis is a gauge freedom. Tilt axis, tilt described with two Euler angles. Can we predict the vortex tilt? Does the tilt affect the vortex dynamics? Do you guys understand what he's saying right here? What he's saying right here is that we can look at a two-dimensional slice of a vortex and we can reverse engineer its shape in the ether. We can reverse engineer its shape in the ether. All we have to do is figure out what are the right equations, how do we model it, and then once we have a model that fits, plug in the numbers. That's it. Circles with circular contours, but they so describing these elliptical of the velocity field, the Schrodinger field, and how to predict how to use that to figure out where the vortex goes. Okay. Now, I mean, that was in his own words right there. I don't actually have these all ready to be clipped. I just know what part I want to show you. But let me just show you this. I mean, this is that image right there. Boom. Yes. And just like somebody said, then, then you can control the direction. Then you can control the direction. Where's the plane going? They are literally controlling the direction of the plane with the orbs. They are using the math that this guy is showing you right here to solve the Schrodinger equation to figure out how the plane is interacting with the ether all around us and determine where it's going to go. They're controlling where it's going to go. Controlling it. <laughs> you get what I'm saying, Chad? And so now our game plan is to be able to figure out how to measure C and theta from the paraxial field, the Schrodinger field, and how to, predict, how to use that to figure out where the vortex goes. Okay. Um, I'm thinking of my friend Ruben Collins, who says, man, theorists love to show a bunch of equations. All right. So sorry, Ruben. I'm going to show a bunch of equations, but only briefly. OK, so it's all we have. The, the first step here is um, to describe the tilt, these two angles in terms of the Schrodinger field. He's saying, OK, everybody says, show me the math. Here's the math. Here's the math. He's saying we can literally figure out the tilt and the vortex motion. Using the math. Take the Schrodinger field that has real and imaginary parts, and you turn it into a two-dimensional vector. It says, you tell me psi, I'll tell you the vortex tilt. I'll tell you the tilt in the ether. I can tell, I, you can figure it out from a two-dimensional shape. And then you play a game in continuum mechanics. I mean, my PhD was in applied mechanics. I got to use it for something. So I take the gradient of this two-dimensional vector, and that makes a tensor. And I think of F here, not its inverse, as being the deformation gradient, like a, the, the gradient that the, the deformation gradient associated with the twist of an elastic continuum or associated with Navier-Stokes, the deformation of a fluid. And if you think of F as that deformation gradient, you say, oh, any tensor can be decomposed into a symmetric part and a, a rotational part. And a symmetric part includes all the stretches and the special axes associated with the ellipse. In other words, if I solve the Eigen system of this. So the word of the day is Eigen system. Every time I look up this quantum mechanics stuff, I see eigenstate, eigensystem. Same with Bose-Einstein condensate. I see eigensystem. It must be like eigensystem must be considered like the, the structure of the shape, basically. What's the structure of the shape? That's the eigensystem. But not the structure in our reality, the structure within the extra-dimensional reality. That's how I, including the ether. That's how I consider the eigensystem from the context. But we're gonna look up Eigen system after this. Eigen system is gonna be the new uh, word. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Tensor V. Here's the Eigen system in terms of the Eigen vectors and Eigen values. It's not too hard to show how those values relate to the two angles. Okay, lots of math, but what is it saying to you? It's saying you solve the Schrodinger equation, and I'll tell you, given that field, exactly what the tilt of the vortex must be, and that's powerful.